of our uh, Temple Emanuel families. Um, this is Wendy Ponomarenko. I'm the art teacher and librarian at uh, Temple Emanuel. Shabbat Shalom. And uh, today's, uh, today's book as part of our ongoing library project to, to bring our library resources to our Temple families during this time of need when all of our libraries are all closed. Uh, tonight's book is called Always in Olivia, which um, is, a, is a family story, almost uh, an ancestral kind of genealogy type story. So it's a, a biography that goes on for multiple generations. It's a little bit unique in our library um, in that it's, it's kind of the only book in the children's section that does that. It can be found in the biography section of our juvenile stacks. I hope you enjoy. This is Always in Olivia, A Remarkable Family History by Carol Livia Heron. Great Grandma Olivia, were you really alive back in slavery times? Yes, Carol Olivia. I was 10 years old when the slaves were freed. I was living right here in Portsmouth, Virginia when I heard the Emancipation Proclamation read. I saw all our black folks so happy, and I was happy right with them. But we weren't slaves then. Our family was a free family. Our slavery was long, long ago back in Egypt. It's right in the Bible. You see, my great-grandma Sarah was a Jewish woman. She sailed the high seas to America. Hundreds of years ago, there was a Jewish family living in Spain near the sea. Spain was a dangerous place for Jews. And one day, someone stood in the street and said, All Jews have to leave Spain right away or the king's army will kill you. It was a terrible time. The mother, Naomi, the father, Jacob, and their five children gathered up a few possessions and ran down to the ocean. They boarded a small boat in the middle of the night and sailed off to Portugal. In Portugal, they lived in the village of Almancil. So Naomi and Jacob took the name Almancil as their last name. They gave up their Jewish name because they were afraid to be known as Jews. The Almancil family loved Portugal. Benjamin, the oldest son, was a fisherman alongside his father, and Hannah, his sister, sold fish beside her mother in the market. On holidays, the Almancil family loved to walk on the tall cliffs of Valle de Lobo and look at the ocean. On Fridays, Naomi secretly made a special Shabbat bread called challah. Hannah went to the sea cliff and picked flowers for the Shabbat evening table. Her brother Benjamin brought home his best fish from the seashore, and every Friday their father brought Hannah and Benjamin small wooden toys he had carved while he was out on the sea waiting for the fish to bite. They didn't want people to see them doing Jewish things, so Naomi closed the shutters tightly before she lit the Shabbat candles. But the family's happiness in Portugal did not last. Just as in Spain, people began to persecute the Jews. Once again, the almond seals were forced to pack up their few possessions and leave quickly. This time, they boarded a big ship with many other Portuguese Jews and sailed across the Mediterranean Sea, past Spain and France, until they landed in Venice, Italy. For many generations, the Almond Seal family lived happily in Venice, among other Jews who had escaped. Life was good, but they never forgot Portugal. In 1787, one of the descendants of Naomi and Jacob, Asher Almond Seal, and his wife Miriam had a daughter. They named her Sarah Shulamit. They sang a song of joy the first time they took her to the synagogue in Venice. Joyful, joyful are all who live in this house. Joyful is the lovely daughter of this house. Joyful are the mother and father of the child who dwells in this house. And Sarah Shulamit was really full of joy. She learned how to dance and she sang new songs. Her father would take her for walks by the sea and tell her the story of their ancestors who lived by the sea in Spain, Portugal, and Italy. She especially liked to hear about Hannah, 
the Jewish girl who sold fish in the market and loved to walk on the sea cliffs of Portugal. One day, Sarah was walking by the sea wearing a dark headscarf, typical of those worn by Jewish women. A group of pirates recognized her as Jewish and kidnapped her for ransom. They imprisoned her in their pirate ship with other captured Jews. They planned to sail across the high seas to North Africa, where they knew that wealthier Jews would pay them silver and gold to free their brothers and sisters. Sarah never saw her family again. All through the voyage, Sarah was terrified. Where was she going? Who would help her? She cried when she saw the evil pirate flag flapping in the breeze. But all the time Sarah was crying, a man named James was watching her. James had been kidnapped too. The pirates had threatened to kill him if he would not join them. So James was pretending to be a pirate until he could escape. When the pirate ship neared the city of Tripoli, Libya, James whispered to Sarah, I'm going to help you. Don't worry. Together they came up with a plan. James tied Sarah's hands behind her back. He put a cloth over her mouth and tied a rope around her waist. When he was sure the captain was asleep in his cabin, James dragged a weeping Sarah off the ship. Where are you going? One, of the, one pirate demanded. I'm taking this woman to Zini, the rich Jew on the Alexandria Road. He will pay us a huge ransom for her. The captain told me to take her. So the pirates let James and Sarah walk away. As soon as they were out of sight, James cut the ropes from Sarah's hands and waist. He threw away the cloth that was over her mouth. Sarah and James smiled at each other. It was good to be free. The two of them decided to seek help at a synagogue. They waited until the men came for afternoon prayers. Sarah approached them and bowed her head. Shema Israel, Adonai Oleheinu, Adonai Ehad. I'm a Jew. Please help me in the name of our God. The men listened to Sarah's story. Those pirates will be here tomorrow with the rest of their stolen Jews, the rabbi said. If they discover you and James have escaped, they'll kill you both. And if they find you here, they may harm our village. Sarah, you have to hide. James, I have an idea for you. They walked up a hill, and the rabbi pointed to some ships in the port. Those ships belong to the United States, the rabbi said. James, you must go to the port. Get on one of them and sail to a new life in America. Here's some money to help you get away. And Sarah, tonight is Shabbat. Here are candles to light when you get to your hiding place. Sarah was very unhappy to have to leave James, and James didn't want to leave Sarah. He whispered in her ear, asking her to meet him at the boat that evening, and Sarah said yes. When they got to the ship, the marine captain agreed to let them both come aboard, and he also agreed to marry them. They sailed to the beautiful, peaceful Georgia Sea Islands off the coast of the United States, where pirates wouldn't bother them anymore. The year was 1805. After her wedding, Sarah began using her Hebrew middle name, Shulamit. It reminded her of her Jewish heritage. Shulamit means peace, and she wanted peace after all of her family's wanderings on the high seas. In Georgia, Sarah Shulamit and James lived with the Geechees, black people who had come from West Africa. They wove clothes and sang songs so beautiful that they enchanted the ocean tides. These Geechees were free, even though at that time other black people were slaves in the United States. Sarah began using the middle name Olivia instead of the Hebrew name Shulamit. Even in America, she was worried about people hurting her because she was Jewish. She chose Olivia because it made her think of an olive branch, the symbol of peace. Sarah, Olivia, and James felt at home among the Geechees. They wore the Geechee clothes and sang their enchanting songs, and Sarah, Olivia, lit Shabbat candles like the ones the rabbi had given her in Tripoli. James and Sarah, Olivia's children married Geechees, as did their children's children. They earned their living catching and selling fish. Sarah did not have a synagogue to go to in the Georgia Sea Islands, 
She forgot almost everything about being Jewish, but some things Sarah didn't forget. She didn't forget her father, Asher, and named her son after him. In English, he was known as Oscar. And Sarah didn't forget that her middle name, Shula, meant, meant peace. She asked her children to give one little girl in every generation a name that meant peace. And Sarah didn't forget to light the Shabbat candles on Friday nights. And Sarah's daughter didn't forget to light the Shabbat candles on Friday nights. And Sarah's daughter's daughter didn't forget to light the Shabbat candles on Friday nights. And Sarah's daughter's daughter's daughter is me. And so, Carol Olivia, that is our story. And I've been waiting all summer for you to visit me so I could tell you. That's such a good story, Great Grandma Olivia. Is it really true? Child, don't you know? It's absolutely true. Well, mostly. At least all the important parts are true. There really was a Jewish, a Jewish man named Asher in Italy who had a daughter named Sarah who was stolen by pirates. And you know that your father's name is Oscar, which is another way of saying Asher. And you were named after my great-grandmother, Sarah. What about, what about my name, great-grandma? I thought I was named after you. Am I named after your great-grandmother, Sarah, too? Yes, both, child, both. In every generation, a little girl is named Olivia. You are the Olivia of your generation. That's how we remember. The end.